So <clears throat> today I have another on-site repair. Uh, customer needs to get his back glass fixed so he can trade it into AT&T for their $700 uh, promotion. So I've mentioned this in the past uh, with some of my back glass, uh, at least for the average consumer, uh, you're not going to be able to you know, spend a bunch of money to buy the really, you know, the expensive laser that um, takes off the, the glue so you can remove the back glass. So you're essentially left with two options. One is bare housing, transferring all the parts. The second is this, which is you can buy, um, and this is a much more feasible repair for the average individual as there's a lot of part, you know stuff that you don't have to transfer over. You know, it comes prepped with the charging assembly, the uh, the charging flex, haptic engine, speakers, microphones, wireless charger. Uh, you know, uh, volume button, side button, power button, mute switch, so on and so forth. And it's just a simple matter of transferring over the board, battery, rear camera, front camera, screen, and then you call it a day versus all of that plus all of these parts which if you don't have a good memory or patience uh, this is definitely the way to go so there are some tools that we're going to need in no particular order uh, we're going to need a pentalobe a phillips tri-wing um, a standoff bit a opening tool nylon spudger I use two different sets of tweezers. I use these two. <laughs> and that's basically it. Uh, two more things, or more like three more things. I use a magnetic mat to keep uh, track of my screws. For the battery adhesive, I use just a couple of drops of rubbing alcohol, 91 or 90. I use 99, you can use that 91%. Um, and then last but not least, especially if you're reusing your screen like I am on this one, it's vitally important that you go easy um, while removing it because obviously the last thing that you want to have to do is replace the screen in the process. So some sort of heat for the perimeter adhesive. So I'm going to put these away and I'll be back in just a sec. So we start with our opening tool. And some heat. So the most import important part is it should be pretty warm to the touch. Gradually slide in your opening tool. As you can see, you really don't need to slide it in very far. And then once you get to the top, um, at this point heat, I mean, the the purpose of heat is so that you don't crack the screen pulling it off. But once you get up here, um, you can just use your pry tool and you can sort of wiggle it back and forth. And really we're just trying to get past these three, one, two, and three, one, two, three. Now these next screws are all tri-wing. I will say this, a good bit 
makes all the difference. Um, also the driver, and it has this nice ball bearing. So it spins very easily. Which a few seconds here, a few seconds there. I mean, can very easily cut down on the repair time and effort. So, first things first and last that we're disconnecting is always the battery just because a device is turned off doesn't mean or just just because it's turned off there's still electricity running through the board So now it's just a matter of pulling everything out. This isn't necessary. I have seen videos where you can remove the battery tabs, but once again, this video is for, it's a DIY for the average person. I really, I don't think it's that much effort to take out the Taptic engine. It will save you a lot of headache if your battery tabs tear, which they tend to. So I use two or three drops per strip. I try to pull at an angle. Just me, I just feel like it works better. Now you do want to be careful up here because of the face ID components.
lightly pressed down on the battery <clears throat> as sometimes the uh, tab has a tendency to pull the battery back. This is our battery, set that aside. Now you can use heat if you want to, but there's the adhesive for the face ID is really not that strong. Now, if you're not doing this in one stretch, it's not a bad idea to set these aside, get, I don't know, plastic bag. Fold that back. If you're uh, inexperienced, I would highly suggest using nylon. Sometimes they're called black sticks, but they're well worth if you slip, you're way less likely to damage the board versus using metal. And I'll be honest, I'm. <clears throat> this is one of those do as I say, not as I do. I frequently use metal, but I mean, I've also done thousands and thousands of phones. It's time for the board. So I always forget to do this and then I need to undo it. <clears throat> Make sure to take your SIM out before pulling out this last screw. I loosen these two a little bit just so that it gives us slightly more room when pulling out because this overlaps just a little bit. So this is our board. We can now take our housing, set it aside. slowly start. So on this one, I'm actually going to need to transfer over the SIM and apparently that flex right there. Now it's not a bad idea. Usually I will do this before all the flexes are installed or before all the uh, board is held down with screws but make sure to connect sometimes if, uh, especially on these longer ones, it's not so much of a, uh, of a deal on the wireless charger, but on the charging port, if it's off by just a fraction of a millimeter, 
it can uh, sometimes be a pain where you literally need to sort of uh, lower the, the flex up or down, whereas if you, you have a little bit more play when the board isn't tightened down. violating my own Now, yeah, once again, need to that is important. It's not necessary, but it certainly makes removing the sim quite a bit easier. It helps to tuck your flex in. You now have this. The top one is just the screw, the bottom has this little metal piece. Now, it is very important, especially with the screen, you can see that there is this little, and essentially there's a slot right here, and it's essentially this thing right here. So let me try to get this on, so this is an autofocus. So you want that to fit right in between this little thing right here, because if it sits above it, then you can crack your LCD. So 
it's going to look something like this with the top of this metal bracket right here sitting just below. So this is sitting just below the bezel line. Make sure that you don't have any dust or debris in the camera lens, or not in the camera lens, in the um, uh, camera lens area. As, well, you're gonna have a problem taking decent photos. So wipe it down. Now, normally I would use battery adhesive. There are these uh, same pull tabs, the same pull tabs that you would take out, you can put back in. But as the customer is just trading in their device, I really don't feel the need Now, out of habit, I always wait. Now, this sounds counterintuitive against my, um, sorry, ADD. So, um, you want to avoid putting, just dropping the battery straight on, uh, on top of the adhesive because if it's not aligned vertically, then let's just say it's a huge pain in the neck. Uh, so you're, what you want to do is connect the battery first, press down, and then disconnect your battery. That way you're not fighting this cable. Trust me, you can get very awkward and very annoying. All the things that I'm telling you, I have spent way too much time learning the hard way. Now, I, I will use one of these. Uh, they do not make the phone water resistant, but uh, typically the number one complaint, critique, whatever adjective you want to use, is that the screen clicks up against the frame and let's just say that's a phone call I'd rather not get so once again I'm trading the customers immediately handing they already have their new phone they just need to hand this off to AT&T so this is sort of a moot point but just for you Kind of annoying, but just use your spudger, flatten it out. Now they usually come in two forms. 
Um, so the first is a two layer. The second is a three layer. This is a three layer. So I took off the first layer. This is the second layer. So you take off the first layer, then you lay it down. Then the second layer is that. Uh, and the benefit there for anyone that's wondering is that you can leave this ring in place while you're connecting. It sort of came up right there, but you can use this ring. Uh, it matters a little bit more on this side so that the flexes or the screen doesn't get stuck. And then you can sort of pull that off at the last moment. So halfway through the video, I uh, noticed this and or more like at the beginning of the video, I noticed this and I uh, didn't realize it until I was just about to connect it. But you can see right here how the... You can clearly see a line there and another one there, which essentially renders the screen, at least as a trade-in, uneligible. So I did a quick screen replacement, which luckily for me, as this one is already in pieces, is pretty, pretty easy. Um, like I said in the beginning, make sure that the first and last thing that you're connecting is the battery. Obviously, I connected the battery just to align it, but immediately disconnected it. Now we can connect the battery. And slowly but surely Out of habit, I don't always tighten one screw until I know it's properly aligned. It's annoying to have to untighten or to loosen the screw because your bracket is out of position. I apologize if I, uh, if I'm just, if I feel, if it sounds like I'm just rambling on and on and on and on and on. I, uh, I mean, the purpose of these videos, why I originally created, started a YouTube channel was because, uh, frequently just, I would, you know, watch a YouTube video because some new, I don't know, something I wasn't certain about and I wanted to watch it ahead of time. And I noticed that there wasn't a whole lot of narration going on and I can imagine for for the novice that hasn't you know doesn't have the level of experience that that I do that would be quite ominous because you don't know way you know how much pressure to apply or where to lift up stuff like that so Pretty much the whole purpose of these videos is just to give to give you the power. So last but not least, we can come here. Once again, make sure that our camera is sitting below. I mean, pretty much the easiest way to do this is just to align your screen. If it sits flush, you're pretty much good to go. Something else that, um, if you haven't gotten to this point, um, I should have mentioned this before, but it's a good idea to make sure, especially when you're working on, uh, you know, sometimes you 
screws go flying um, or they're gonna be loose screws make sure there are no loose screws that uh, adhere themselves to the Taptic engine loudspeaker or just along the frame one more thing that I have done when I'm in a hurry and I don't check And I accidentally break something. So once again, learn from my mistakes. If you've made it to this part of the video, thank you so much. Watching to the end definitely helps out my channel. Uh, if you got anything out of um, this video, please make sure to give uh, the video a like. Uh, leave a comment. That also helps. Uh, let me know how your repair went. And I don't know if there was a trick that you didn't know previous that I can make sure to, I mean, the whole purpose of these are to enable the average individual to take on repair themselves. So let me know how I can improve these videos. Uh, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.